Would you buy an RV with this number of miles on it? Stay tuned, we're gonna check that out right now. Hey there, welcome back. Dr. Dave, the RV dummy. How are you doing? I appreciate you and thanks for coming back on another, what I think is gonna be a fantastic episode. Um, before we get started, one real quick favor. Give me a like real fast, but just get it over with before we start. Click the like button. I guarantee you're gonna not only like, but love this particular video. And if not, you take it away at the end, but that really rarely happens. So thanks a lot. Go ahead and do that. It really helps the channel quite a bit. I put a lot of energy into these things and I do appreciate the likes. So a um, couple things before we get started on the main question today is, would you buy an RV with this number of miles on it? Um, number one, um, I'm doing three things different on this video today. Three things different. Um, from any video I've ever done, three things are different. Um, if you can guess, the first person to guess is the, the three things I'm doing differently on this video in the comments section. The first person to guess is wins a prize. I don't know what the prize is going to be yet. I haven't thought about that. But it's going to be a prize. I promise you. See if you get it. Comment. It's got to be the three things. They don't have to be in any order, but they've got to be accurate. Three things I'm doing differently on this video. Number two, um, we're having a lot of really great luck with our live streaming. I'm doing them every other Sunday. I try to. Twice a month, we're trying to do some live stream. If you want to come up, become a VIP to get last uh, up to the minute, no, I should say up to the minute notifications in real time when we're going live, just go ahead and follow the um, directions on the screen down here. Type VIP to the phone number you see down there and I'll get you on my VIP list. I will never, ever, ever share your phone number with anyone and I will never spam you. I'll never abuse it. The only thing I'll use it for is important notifications for the channel when we're going live. Um, if there's anything else, super, super important. But you can ask my VIPs when we go live. I never, ever even dream about abusing your valuable number. So there. Um, what else do we have before we get going? I think that's really it. Um, so let's get going with the first question of the day. Dr. Dave, check out the Cruise America website. I've seen Class C motorhomes with between 100,000 and 150,000 miles on them. Supposedly they're professionally maintained with a paper trail of records. They are between three and five years old. They're selling these used. They're selling these used for 20,000 and go up to about $36,000. Apparently the whole interior is renewed before sale. I could actually justify a motorhome for $30,000. Well, yeah, that's a good price for a motorhome, but Let's keep reading this thing. You can purchase a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. I bet you can. I'm sure you can purchase anything these days. Sounds better than most new coach warranties. If you'd like, check out some of the buyer videos. I'm most interested in the Majestic 19G. What are your thoughts? And my good friend and subscriber, Hans Raub, sent that question in to me. So let me just, uh, I, and I promise him I would answer this on today's show live. Well, no, we're not live, but we're recording, but close enough. Um, okay, so as you know, Hans and everybody watching in here, I'm a big, big fan of used. I buy used. I buy, whenever I buy a vehicle in general, whether it's a car or an IV, IV, <laughs> I'm thinking like Dr. IV stuff, come on, whether it's a car or an RV, and we're not editing this thing out unless I make like a horrible mistake, right? Uh, that wasn't a horrible mistake. Uh, <laughs> Um, but when I buy a car, an automobile, or an RV, or something with a motor, something like that, I generally will buy used only because I think you get the absolute best deals. You let somebody else take the depreciation. It just makes a lot of sense. And also, I pay cash for what I buy. I do not finance something. If I can't afford it, I don't buy it. However, buying a vehicle with 100,000 to 150,000 miles on it, to me, um, seems like a lot. Not only do, do these vehicles have 100 to 150,000 miles on them, but they are rental vehicles, which means generally the people, not, not saying all the time, but the people that rent an RV generally don't know what they're doing. They're kind of testing the waters to see if RV living's for them. They um, don't really 
need to take fantastic care of it. They can gun the engine, they can do weird things with the engine and not really pay any kind of consequence because at the end of the week or however long they rent it, they just turn it in, they don't care. Multiply that times five years worth of use and possibly abuse. I just, I just don't feel comfortable I would not feel comfortable buying an RV with that many miles on it. Now, again, you're saying they, they redo the whole interior. They, they possibly um, offer you a 100,000-mile warranty, which, by the way, won't be free. you got to pay for it. And will that cover everything? Will that cover if the, if the engine goes up, the, um, you need a new engine? Will that, will, I don't know the answer. Will it cover that? My bet is probably not. But why would you want to buy something where there's a chance the engine... I mean, 150 thousand miles on a gas engine if it's not really taken great care of is a lot of miles i'd be a little concerned hans i mean i i, I personally wouldn't do it again if you want to take the chance spend 30 grand buy the hundred thousand mile warranty make sure you know exactly what it covers and what it doesn't cover make sure you know that read the fine print everywhere then take a chance on it knowing that you could have some problems with this rig that has 150,000 miles on it. Just understand that and I think you'll be good. That's my opinion. I wouldn't do it. Um, as most of you know, I bought two rigs so far. Both of them are class Bs. Um, the first one had a lot of, well, not a lot, but it had 80, about 78 to 79,000 miles on it, which still is not a lot. It's half of what, um, you know, the, this uh, Cruise America site is selling for. And my second rig had only 10,000 miles on it. So I do believe in getting a superior deal, reasonably low mileage. If you could find one with 10 to 15 to 20, I mean, that's fantastic if you can do that. But, you know, even 30, 40, 50,000 miles is, is not a lot of miles. 150, yeah, it's, it's starting to be a lot of miles, I think so. So, Hans, good luck to you. Let us know what you decide to do. Next question from Billy Johnson. Billy says, I'd like to see... I'd like to see you talk about investing in dividend-paying stocks and your picks. I'm sure you invest. Wait a minute. Is this, is this an RV channel or is this a uh, personal finance channel? Hold on. Let me check. Um, Billy, no, I, I respect the question. And I, I, you're right. I do talk a lot about personal finance, even though I'm not a, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have any kind of license to like give this type of advice. I just I speak from my heart and tell you what I've experienced through, through my life experience. So since you did ask, since it's an RV channel, I will answer um, briefly as well because it's, an, it's a really, really important question. Um, investing in dividend paying stocks. I do not any longer invest in single stocks. Now, when I was younger, I had, I had Apple, I had Microsoft, I had Intel, I had Amazon, I had a bunch of those uh, stocks that, that ended up, I, I did pretty well with those. I ultimately sold those um, to pay off my ex-wife in a divorce. Oh, I shouldn't be saying that in a, I shouldn't be saying this in, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> That's the sad thing. It's true. Um, yeah, I still smile even though I lost a lot of money. But you know, they say divorce is expensive. You know why? Um, because it's worth it. I, I, this probably should not be in the video, but I'll, I might leave it in just for the humor value, but it's all true. That's the, that's the saddest thing. Um, but I don't invest in single stocks anymore. I invest in really good quality mutual funds, um, growth, aggressive growth, growth and in income, um, international, things like that. Um, my funds are managed. I do pay somebody to manage those. I'm not doing it myself. Although doing it myself, I, I probably could do. But no, so to answer your question, Billy, I, I no longer invest in dividend in any single stocks, let alone dividend. But one of my portfolios does have big cap stocks, which will pay dividends back into the mutual fund portfolio. And then they take care of all that. I hope that helps you, um, Billy. Just make sure you are on the right course. The most important thing is to invest be on the right course, make sure you're in good funds. And um, if you do this over many decades, you will end up being a very wealthy man, I guarantee it. You gotta have discipline there though. Um, Diane Coy says, "How I love your YouTube videos. My husband and I are thinking of going full-time, but we want to start out slow. Diane, that is very, very smart. First of all, I congratulate you for wanting to go full-time. It's I, I'm not a full-timer, as most of you know. Um, we're kind of a recreational RV family. We you know we we live in a, a sticks and bricks house, but we uh, we do take it out quite a bit. 
Um, going full-time is definitely the next level, but Diane, I wanna make sure that you have an RV first and have you tested the waters and you know about it, you know what it's like before you say you're gonna go full-time. I would recommend don't jump into it fast at all. Spend a couple years if you like um, just, again, testing the waters, going to campgrounds, uh, going to BL, BLM land, uh, going uh, boondocking, whatever you want to do, but don't go from sticks and bricks right smack into full timing. I think there might be some shock value there, which you want to make sure you mitigate that and, and just take it uh, slowly, which I think you said you're going to do, which is very, very, very smart. You say you're going to start out slow. From Yumiko Roller, she says, Happy Thanksgiving to you and Yoko-san from Lexington, Kentucky. And we got, by the way, thank you, Yumiko. Thank you, arigato gozaimasu. And um, we got a lot of, a lot of Thanksgiving um, uh, wishes. And we, Yoko and I, from our hearts, send out to you. I know I shouldn't re really ever like time date stamp these videos because this video hopefully will be good for like a long time. And people might be watching it in May thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, it's not Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving comes once a year, so it was really great to see so many people wish me and Yoko a happy Thanksgiving. We wish the same back to you for holidays and anything. We just wish you a great life. That's what we want. We want everybody to be happy and enjoy what you're doing. That is like the most important thing in life, no question about it. Christina W. says, Happy Thanksgiving from, from Land Lakes, Florida, just north of Tampa. By the way, I will be there speaking in the not too distant future. And then I'll be spending some time in Orlando with um, my daughter, son-in-law, grandsons. Yeah, I've got grandsons. Does that mean I'm old if I have grandsons? I remember when I was younger and I would look up to my grandfather and hang out with him, I, but I thought he was like really old. Like, really old. He couldn't, just, he couldn't just do stuff. But I still do stuff, so I don't know if I'm old or not. I mean... We ski, we hike, we mountain bike. We, my grandfather like, never did stuff like that. He didn't even RV. But he was a ham radio operator, so that's good. <laughs> um, she says, I'm not an RVer yet, but planning for retirement sooner or later. I have about eight to 10 years before my husband and I are retired. I, start watch, I started watching your channel to get some basics on buying an RV. But I've stayed with you because I love the different things you talk about. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Be safe. So again, that's from um, Christina W. Christina, thank you so much. See, I want to share this with everybody out there watching this. Yes, this is an RV channel. We talk RVs. We talk camping. We talk a lot about RVs. But we also talk about other things because RVs are kind of like a metaphor for life. Like, since Yoko and I bought our second rig, even our first one, but our second rig, our lives have changed. I mean, it opened the door for so many other opportunities. I'm not even sure why, but I would say that since we had the guts, the wherewithal, that made the choice to buy an RV, it probably gave us more confidence to do a lot of other things in our life. Like move out to Utah, move out to Salt Lake City, Utah. I mean, Whoever would have thought we were going to do that, but I think getting into the, to the RV life was kind of like the um, catapult or the impetus to get us going in so many other parts of our life. And so we love it. So yeah, the RV life is great. Um, that's why I have this channel. But again, we talk about other things. And somebody earlier just asked me about investing and I gave him the best answer I possibly could, not being a financial planner. But um, I could probably do a whole video on investing in how to accumulate money over your lifetime, but that's not what you're here for. Maybe some of you would be interested in that, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, another question here, it might be a comment, I'm not sure, is from Patrick Baptist. Somehow, by the nature of this question, I'm thinking that it might not be his real name, but let's see what the question is, or it might just be a comment, like I said. He says, RVs are junk anyways. He said, this is, this is his anyways, and ridiculous to dispose of. Way better to convert school buses and coach buses to RVs. RVs are built like crap and overpriced for the ignorant with too much money credit to waste on junk that won't last. Patrick, you are a genius. What a profound statement. RVs are junk and always ridiculous to dispose of. I mean, well, I mean, 
I'm not so sure I agree with that. I mean, I know plenty of people, including myself, that have RVs that are very, very well built. I mean, mine's a 2006 chassis with a 2007 Pleasure Way build out. Um, so that's over 10 years old. The thing runs like it's brand new. Now, I don't think junk would be the right word to call my RV that's over 10 years old and, and looks like it just came off the showroom floor. Um, so no, Patrick Baptist, Patrick Baptist, I disagree with you. You are wrong. And the 10, close to 10,000 people, well, 9,300 people on my channel. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. The 9,300 people on my channel would argue with you day and night that the RVs are not junk. They are good if you get a good one. And they're built well, generally, not always, but generally. And they lead to a fantastic, fantastic lifestyle. So... Patrick, I hope you enjoyed that answer right there. Um, we're going to leave it at that. I think I'm not going to do any more questions or comments because I think that just, <laughs> they're getting too crazy. Yeah, it's, I got to tell you, before I leave you, it is crazy running, an RV, running a YouTube channel. As I said, I think on my last video, I think I said it, there's just a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that are just nuts. But I love it. And I love you guys. And I love helping. So I'm going to be around. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but it's just sometimes it's just a little bit nutso, if you know what I'm saying. Um, anyway, thanks so much for being a part of this. I'm the RV Dummy. If you would like to, click the little subscribe button down there. I'd love to have you as a permanent member on the RV Dummy show. And um, I think we're going to call it a day. That puts another episode in the books. I'm Dr. Dave. The RV Dummy, I will see you, you, next time. Bye.